While this video may not resonate with everyone, those who do tune in and actively apply the advice shared within could see transformative benefits in their careers and lives. Here's a quick rundown of the video sections along with their timestamps. Feel free to hop to any section of your interest. Imagine landing a career where a $150,000 salary is typical. Well, in cloud computing, that dream is a reality. Roles like Google Certified Professional Cloud Architect and Amazon Web Services, Certified Solutions Architect Associate, average around $175,000 and $149,000 in North America. And that was back in 2020. The uh, salaries have increased a bit. I want to give you an insider look at the most lucrative cloud computing jobs, the key skills that drive these high salaries, and a roadmap to get there even without a tech background. First, let's expose why cloud careers pay so well. Put simply, demand is far outpacing supply for cloud talent as more companies transition to the cloud. That gives you incredible leverage. Could you provide credible evidence to prove that these jobs and their salaries are real? Of course, I understand a $150,000 plus salary may sound unrealistic for North America, but I assure you, it's achievable. So let's validate that first. Today is February 28, 2024. We are on LinkedIn searching for cloud architect roles in the United States. The salaries for some positions are visible, so we will click on those to get more details. This role here is for a cloud solutions architect from Microsoft. The salary range is between $80,900 and $176,900 per year. This next one ranges between $160,000 and $180,000 a year plus bonus. The role that follows is from Microsoft again, and it ranges between $124,800 and $264,000 a year. The following position is for a cloud architect senior manager. The salary range for that role is from $141,800 to $269,100 a year. What about demand in different countries? All right, we can see that cloud architect roles are available everywhere. That's how the demand looks like in Germany. The same goes for Sweden. Let's check how things look in Denmark. What about England? Nevertheless, Ireland. And lastly, Spain. Please provide comparisons of cloud architect salaries globally across major regions. Sure. We have seen that the average salary for a cloud architect role in North America is around $150,000. However, Salaries vary globally. Latin America averages $43,000 for cloud architects. Europe sees salaries around $85,000 and Asia Pacific values the role at up to $75,000. While lower than North America, these salaries remain highly competitive within their respective regional job markets. Do you need an academic degree to get hired for a cloud computing job? Good question. You may think that you need an academic degree to land such a job, but that piece of paper is not a barrier when it comes to landing a lucrative role in cloud computing. Many employers care more about hands-on skills and credentials than academics. You don't need a computer science degree to enter this field. In fact, I've seen numerous cloud architects on LinkedIn with no formal college education. However, they do possess relevant certifications from leading providers like AWS, Microsoft Azure, and Google Cloud. That practical knowledge is what companies want to see, and you can build that through self-study, online courses, 
and certification training. In fact, recruiters or headhunters often ask if you are certified in cloud technologies, but almost never inquire about academic degrees. Some may think it is too late to start a new career. What is your opinion? Those of you who think that it is uh, late to start a new career or make a career change should know that it is never too late. Research and studies have consistently shown that people can successfully transition into satisfying and rewarding new careers at any age. For example, a 2017 article in Nature reported that individuals who attempted career changes later in life experienced higher job satisfaction and happiness in their new roles. Karen Wicker offers a compelling example of someone who successfully navigated a career in the tech industry later in life. She was offered a job at Google at the age of 51. And this is Jack Cover who invented the taser at age 50. So don't let age hold you back from pursuing your interests and goals. It's truly never too late to make a career change. Why do professional certifications have value and why do they matter? All right, I'll explain. Amazon Web Services and other hyperscalers cannot satisfy market demand on their own. They do not possess enough manpower. So they rely on partners like DXC and Capgemini who have massive global workforces. Amazon Web Services and others offer different partnership levels that partners can qualify for by meeting certain bars like revenue thresholds. The top consulting partners must have a large number of certified professionals. This ensures they can expertly facilitate complex cloud projects for clients. So make no mistake, certifications are a must have, not only to showcase your personal abilities, but to help partners meet quality and expertise bars that open up opportunities. This creates a powerful cycle where certified individuals make partners more elite, which in turn accelerates individual careers. Who are the leading cloud service providers in the market? All right, let's take a look at the Gartner Magic Quadrant to answer your question. The Gartner Magic Quadrant is a renowned research tool that provides a visual snapshot of a market's direction, maturity, and participants. It evaluates companies based on their ability to execute and completeness of vision. The quadrant is divided into four segments, leaders, challengers, visionaries, and niche players. In the latest Magic Quadrant for strategic cloud platform services, as of October 2023, the leaders are Amazon Web Services, Microsoft, Google, and Oracle. Throughout this video, we'll be focusing on Amazon Web Services as our primary example. However, it's important to note that the concepts we discuss are applicable to other cloud providers. Now that you've demonstrated the viability of these remarkable opportunities and explained the underlying dynamics, could you please provide a roadmap to achieve the goal? Certainly, the key to success is continuous personal development, making yourself irresistible to employers. This involves sharpening your technical skills, but don't forget about soft skills like communication, which allow you to effectively apply that knowledge in the workplace. So, here's the roadmap broken down into clear and simple steps. I'll cover each point, ensuring you understand the rationale behind it. Additionally, I'll provide an estimate of how long it would take for a complete beginner to accomplish each step. So, why is English proficiency important? English proficiency is crucial for several reasons. First and foremost, it grants access to the best cloud computing courses, resources and job opportunities, especially with major IT consulting firms that have international teams. Proficiency in English enables effective communication and collaboration with colleagues from diverse backgrounds. If you don't know English, I strongly recommend dedicating some time to learning it as it will significantly enhance your professional prospects. You need to reach business level English fluency. This is most comparable to the C1 level on the common European framework of reference scale. 
For a beginner, this would require 700 to 800 hours of study. Let's assume 800 hours to be on the safe side. Studying full time at 8 hours per day, 800 hours would take about 100 days. That's approximately 3 months and 10 days. Moving on to the next milestone, the CompTIA IT Fundamentals Certification. Could you please explain what it entails and how it fits into the overall roadmap? Of course, let's talk about the CompTIA IT Fundamentals Certification. If you're looking to get into IT but don't have any background or experience, this certification is a great place to start. It gives you a solid base of knowledge covering all the essentials, including IT concepts and terminology infrastructure, applications, and software, software development, database, fundamentals, and security. The certification shows employers that you have a basic understanding of IT concepts and principles. It proves that you get a technology and how it works together behind the scenes. Even though it's a beginner level cert, it still carries weight and will definitely strengthen your resume, especially if the rest of your work history is non-technical. For someone with no prior IT experience, preparing for the CompTIA IT Fundamentals Certification Exam would take approximately four weeks of full-time study. With diligent focused preparation for eight hours per day, it is reasonable to be exam ready in four weeks. The key factors are devoting the full-time effort and following an efficient study plan. The next step on the roadmap is the CompTIA a certification. Could you please clarify why it's needed? All right, I'll clarify. CompTIA a certification. This certification is a smart next step after getting your IT fundamentals cert. It really builds on that base knowledge to validate deeper skills in vital stuff like hardware, operating systems, software troubleshooting, networking, troubleshooting, security, mobile devices, virtualization and cloud computing, and nonetheless, operational procedures. The a continues beefing up your resume as a junior IT practitioner. To prepare for the CompTIA a certification exam, most people, about 75%, get ready in less than three months. So if we take that as a baseline, I think you would be ready to pass the certification within three months of full-time study, eight hours per day. Moving on to the next step, the Amazon Web Services Solutions Architect Associate Certification seems to be an important milestone, isn't it? Indeed, it is an important milestone. Earning the Amazon Web Services Certified Solutions Architect Associate Certification cements your title as an Amazon Web Services Cloud Solutions Architect. This credential proves you have the in-demand skills like compute, networking, storage, databases, deployment, management, security, compliance, Amazon Web Services Management Console, well-architected framework, and more. Achieving this certification validates to employers that you have the hard-won technical breadth and depth. Furthermore, once you update your LinkedIn profile with this newly acquired certification, you will become visible to recruiters and talent acquisition teams actively looking for cloud architects. New job opportunities can start presenting themselves by signaling your updated credentials to the market. For someone with no hands-on experience, an estimate to prepare for and attain the Amazon Web Services Certified Solutions Architect Associate Certification would be around three months studying full-time, typically about eight hours of study per day. If you've made it this far, students, then you've knocked out all the essential milestones needed before you can land a job. So what's next on the agenda? Congratulations. By now, you should have completed important milestones. So well done on reaching these outstanding achievements. Moving on. Let me share with you some valuable tips that could boost your chances of securing a job opportunity. Before landing a job after gaining your first cloud certification, you have to start working on your CV. It should contain evidence that you have basic IT knowledge prior to your cloud certification. 
This signals that you didn't just jump into the cloud world, but have a solid understanding of information technology. So it looks more natural and convincing to hire someone with a logical CV structure versus only a standalone cloud certification. What about hands-on experience? Is it important? Yes, of course. It is important to get hands-on practice with what you have learned from your certification. You should do many labs and exercises in a test environment to develop a solid understanding of how services work in the cloud. This practical knowledge will be valuable during technical interviews. The interviewers will evaluate your understanding of cloud computing. They may ask you to solve a case study or explain how you would design a sample system. In a way, practice makes perfect. The last step on the roadmap is landing a job. Could you provide some guidance, please? Absolutely. By now, you should have cleared all your certifications, gained some hands-on experience, polished your CV, and updated your LinkedIn profile with all your hard-earned certifications and skills. You might start receiving job offers shortly after you update your profile with your first CompTIA certification, which is a good sign, but you can definitely expect a surge in cloud-related offers after you've updated your LinkedIn with your cloud certification. Landing that first job as a junior cloud solutions architect is crucial for converting your Amazon Web Services certification knowledge into practical abilities. This on-the-job experience gives you the opportunity to learn by doing and work on impactful projects alongside experienced colleagues. In this period after getting hired, you'll likely be involved in projects as a junior member of the cloud solutions team, helping to deliver on key requirements. Could you share some details on the costs associated with certifications and courses? Sure, let's dive into the costs. If you're all in for acing the English proficiency exam, specifically the C1 Advanced CAE, I suggest going for the computer-based Cambridge Assessment English. It's tagged at about $295. The CompTIA IT Fundamentals certification is priced at $138. Moving up a notch, the CompTIA A Plus certification is a tad pricier, coming in at $253. And if you're looking at the Amazon Web Services Solutions Architect Associate certification, that will set you back $150. So the total cost for a certification comes to $836. Keep in mind, taxes will be added based on your country of residence. If you're gearing up for English proficiency test and certifications, you'll need to take some courses. These courses can be purchased from different providers, also called course marketplace. But I recommend Udemy for the simple reason that it is not subscription based like Skillshare and professional top-rated courses are cheap. Still, you have to watch out to not pay the highest price, as Udemy tends to continually raise and lower prices. A sweet spot for each course would be 12 US dollars. The best thing is that you own the course forever. In other words, four courses would cost you roughly 50 US dollars. Just a final thought. Success doesn't happen overnight. It takes real discipline and dedication to reach your goals. So, believe in yourself and just go for it. And hey, if you've got any questions, drop them in the comment section. I'd be more than happy to answer them. Good luck 